The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You got markets reversing basically all the intraday action yesterday. Meta, some strong earnings, man, stock up dramatically after hours last night on their numbers. Tonight, we continue the action with Amazon, Intel, Snapchat, among some others. It's been a pretty spectacular week for the tech companies, right? Microsoft, Google, you get Meta earnings. Now we come to Amazon earnings. Apple, one week from today, we get a Fed decision six days from today. Market sitting at 4,100 on the S&P. It was quite an acceleration yesterday, man. You were trading to higher prices, taking a look. Now, Microsoft had quite the banner day yesterday, right? You trade from 275, you close out at 295, closes up $20 in the positive. Google, much different story. In terms of the action you got Tuesday night, you spike higher on the numbers. Just going into the action we had from yesterday, pretty interesting, folks, when you put this on a Fibonacci basis. Where did we spike to? The 1 to 618, right around that level. And I know you ballpark anything, you can find a level. But it is remarkable how many times, even when you look into a 1 to 1 1.618 expansion, Google got up to about 107 yesterday. You gave up almost three full percent almost into the close. You closed it out at 104.50. Today, we're basically flat again. Google, spectacular numbers, okay? Markets still a little skittish on Google, maybe losing that ad revenue for being the search giant. They dominated it like 90% of the search market. Seems like that's going to go away to some degree. They're going to be an active player. But controlling the internet search market, 90% of the searches, and you think they've been doing it for 20 years, you don't have to go back far in history, folks, to see how even the best companies around that dominate lose their top post at some degree, at least 90%. I mean, the internet is the future. The internet is the world. They control 90% of it. And it seems like finally AI and Microsoft and Bing might give them a run for their money and the money indeed. Google, pretty flat numbers on their numbers. Now, Meta, not the case, man. This thing is rocketing even higher. Check it out. We're going to be up $30. Meta's going to jump up 15%. And you're talking about a company that had about an $18 move priced in. So you're going to open up 30 bucks. That was $18 in either direction. So if you were buying an at-the-money put or a call last night on Meta shares, I always want to say Facebook, coming into the close at about 210 if you were directionally correct, right, you had to make about $10 to break even. Well, you've tripled that, man. But you can see how even in options, right, when there's huge volatility priced into an equity, folks, this move is mammoth. A company like Facebook now going to be up 15%. I think this number's calculated. You're talking about a $621 billion company. you got 2.5 billion shares outstanding. So what are you going to add? $75 billion in market cap overnight. But meanwhile, you paid 10 bucks, and let's jump over to it, all right, because we jump over to the options that expire Friday, and you scroll down to where this was. We got to open it up last night because these are priced. Options do not trade, uh, most at least. There's some nuances in terms of the SPY options when they trade, et cetera, but individual equity options trade during market hours. You back it up to where it was last night at about 210, okay, and you can see the bid ask for a call just above nine bucks. The bid ask for a call um, put just above nine dollars. All right. Now, what's remarkable is, is that you've gotten a mammoth move, man. Number one, you had to be directionally correct right away. That's a 50 50 chance you lose. And ten dollars into that move, you're still breaking even. And even when you get moves like this, you only triple your money. And I say only triple, folks. Because there's going to be so many times that right away, one out of two times, you're going to lose everything. In theory, okay, now you have a market bias, and we're, we're deviating here a little bit, but it is important to realize when you see this type of a move, you said, man, I wish I had crushed it last night. There was a lot of volatility priced into this equity, man. Meta had almost a 10% move priced in in either direction. 
Well, that's basically what it did after hours. You've accelerated higher than that, but it moved 10%, okay? So keep that in mind when you're talking about options, folks. If you check out the program Fast Market at 12 o'clock, they do a great job. But it just is important to keep in perspective here because, yeah, you would have crushed it out of the park here. You know, you would have put up 9 bucks, And as of right now, man, you're making at least, what, $20, $22 on that at-the-money call. But right away, you would have lost half the percent, half of the time. So one out of two times you lose because in theory it trades lower. And some X percentage of the time, right, this thing's gonna be moving three to five dollars. Maybe it has a Google day, right? Google's reaction yesterday. Now Google only had about a four to five percent move priced in, but you see the action in Google. Google is basically flat over two days from where it was two days prior. You're gonna get moves like that. Very rarely do you get moves like this, but guess what, man? If you called it, you called it right, they seem to be turning things around. We'll get into MetaShares and their numbers later in the program. But boy, it's going to be a big day for Zuckerberg, man. And you take a look at this thing longer, longer term, you're going to open at 241, folks. You're going to be above the 50%. I mean, next stop seems like, what, 275? You're going to open at 241, and the lower boundary of early last year is pushing about right there. 244 was the lows in January, but we chopped around between about 250 and 275. So you're going to probably come into that area. We'll see if you can get some resistance. But yeah. You're talking about almost a triple bagger from where this thing was at the lows. And I remember, man, you know, longer term basis, the P.E. ratio on Facebook, we were talking about it. It's down to like 11 or 10 or something like that. Just, you know, staggering numbers. You had to step in front of the train to a certain degree. But keep your eye on some of those when they get there. Now, the argument for that P.E. at the time was they're not going to make any money if Zuckerberg is just pouring money into A.I., there is certain truth to that, okay? No matter how much money they make off Facebook and Instagram, if he's taking all that money and he's plowing billions, which he is, into AI right now, it doesn't matter what their future PE is because the earnings could all go away because that is going to be a endless hole of money in terms of what you can spend for AI. Because think about it, folks. He, is, he has the Oculus Quest 2, right? Meta, they make the headset. They are going to be in the wearables department in terms of transforming a video game into a real human life experience. And I'm telling you, folks, it's coming. All right. You're going to be able to wear a suit, jump into a room in your house. The floor is going to move uh, so that you can literally run one way or the other and you're staying in the same space. Maybe the floor is moving. Right. You're going to completely feel like you are in a realistic environment that is all created by virtual reality. It's going there eventually, and that is an endless money pit when you think about it. So that's the fear there. But with that said, uh, advertising still coming in, man. And that's been the big theme so far, right? Google crushed it in terms of what they were expecting. Meta, Facebook now crushes it in terms of what they're expecting. We get to see if Snapchat is an anomaly. They were a couple times in terms of this sell-off they've had in terms of, boy, you know, yes, they deal in advertising, so they got quite a pop coming into the opening bell this morning. They're up by, what, 30 pennies, 35 pennies for Snapchat. They have their earnings after the bell, and you jump over. You want to talk about a move, folks? How about a 16% move priced into their numbers after the bell tonight? Since we're doing it, let's jump over to Intel shares. Intel, it's quite a move as well. Buck 73 for a $29 stock for Intel. And of course we get Amazon, not quite the same volatility. Amazon catches a bid last night as well on those meta numbers, $6.23. There's your action, action on Amazon, up almost 3% in the pre-market. Stay tuned folks, we'll come back, talk to our man Kevin Hicks, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 22 points right now, trading at 4,098. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, TD Ameritrade Network, folks, every day at 12 o'clock with the program Fast Market right here on Tiger TV. And we got our host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and they are broadcasting live from the Morningstar Investment Conference in Chicago uh, for a few days. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. A lot going on here this morning so far. You know, Tommy, it's interesting how this week has set up. Positive in the morning based on good earnings and negative in the afternoon based on macroeconomic data. And I think, at least to start the day, it's playing out exactly as it has all week, Tommy. We're much higher on Meta's earnings. Uh, but if you look at some of the economic data, it's, it's concerning. GDP, that personal consumption expenditures of 3.7%, that was a big beat, Tommy. Household purchases, both durable, non-durable goods and services, much higher than expected. And you saw the, the bonds sell off and yields tick higher. You saw the U.S. dollar go from negative on the day to positive on the day. And you saw crude oil rally, all based on that personal consumption number. That, along with jobless claims that were lower than expected and lower than last week, this is going to be another interesting day where the earnings have to win over the macroeconomic data. So far this week, Tommy, it hasn't. It, you laid it out great, man. I was You beat me to the question almost in terms of the market. Just really shakes off all of that, man. We were coming into those numbers you just mentioned at around 4,100. We did get a little volatility of about 15 S&P points. And we're within about a point of where we were. Meanwhile, you mentioned I pulled them up on the Thinkorswim platform as you were talking about it, man. The dollar index, quite a spike, quite a spike in yields as well. Pretty interesting. You have the dollar and the yields moving. Market hasn't really moved from where it was. You mentioned some of the numbers. What did you think of the action in Google in particular yesterday, Kevin? Because I found it so interesting. They had some pretty good numbers and they actually ended the day almost flat, very volatile day. But I found myself saying, geez, what if they didn't come in where they came in? And I know you had, you know, they had declined somewhere, but overall, even after the market on Tuesday, pretty strong numbers. And as you're speaking of, really weighed down yesterday, and we're basically right where we were coming into the numbers for Google. Meanwhile, it's been pretty spectacular, I'd say, so far for the tech companies and their numbers. My knee-jerk reaction, Tommy, when Google Alphabet's earnings came out was pretty good, but here's the thing. If you look at Microsoft's numbers and the jump up in their search numbers, 
right? If any company starts increasing their market share in search, there's only one company they're, they're, they're taking away from, and that's Google Alphabet, right? So if OpenAI, Chat G, G, GPT that Microsoft is investing heavily in, if that starts, <coughs> excuse me, if that starts chipping away at Google search uh, market share, which is north of 85 percent, that's going to be a big problem for for them going forward. I mean, digital ad spend and YouTube that that's a concern going going forward. So yeah, I think uh, part of the good news at Microsoft was was concerning for Google Alphabet. I don't know if that turned the stock, but overall expectations were high for some of these companies, Tommy. And yeah. you really had to blow the numbers away, like Microsoft did, like Meta did overnight, to uh, have these stocks rally. We'll see if. You know, the overall market. Yesterday's question was, can Microsoft elevate the entire market? The answer yesterday was no. Can Meta do it today? We'll, we'll, we'll see, Tommy. They're trying again in the pre-market, like you said, man. And we get to find out in about eight minutes uh, where we go from there. And some great points on Google, man. I found myself, Kevin, I've mentioned to you that I have tried out tried out ChatGPT. It's an amazing technology. kind of blows you away, as everybody says. But I did find myself going to Bing the search site for Microsoft for the first time in probably forever, right? My brain doesn't even go back that far. And right away I said to myself, well, there's the shift. There's the shift alone. It's no longer, I just went to a website that why would I ever go there previously? And guess what? I pulled it up, man, and I got on the waiting list because why not? And uh, amazing that Google has had a monopoly for about 20 years of searching the internet. Um, yeah, that's They'll a very claim it's not a monopoly, Tommy, but we all know it's as Oof. close as you can possibly be to a monopoly. Yeah, and I tried it. It's just, you know, and, and they had it because they were the best. And boy, it's tough to, to keep control of technology for decades on end, man, as things accelerate. And we're seeing it with AI. With that in mind, I know you guys are live today, Kevin. You guys have been broadcasting from the Morningstar Investment Conference at McCormick Place uh, in Chicago. What are you guys talking about on the program at 12 today, Kevin? Good news, Tommy. We're actually back in the studio today. Oliver okay. Rennick is still at the conference. Tom White and I are back in the studio today. We'll, we'll Obviously, we'll be talking about Amazon today. That'll be the focus of the show. We'll look at Intel. We'll look at Snap. We may touch into ExxonMobil or Chevron that have our earnings before the market tomorrow. But you can bet we've got big names after the bell today. We're going to cover them all, Tommy. Can you give us a little teaser on Amazon for a minute, Kevin? I got it up almost $3, sure. $3.50 almost in the pre-market, man, pushing the highs of the week. Uh, pretty lofty numbers for them as they report after it's the bell. What do you think of Amazon? It's for, been yeah, it's been strong for two reasons. Digital ad spend is showing up in Meta's numbers, and cloud, intelligent cloud in Microsoft's numbers all give the um, hope that Amazon will sure. deliver in AWS and in, like I said, they now also rely on digital ad spend. So those two things, if those are getting better, then that that's good for Amazon, Tommy. It's pretty interesting when you come second and third in the earnings lineup, your competitors beat, and now the pressure's on Amazon after the bell. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning, man, as always. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today, and you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. We got Amazon up here on the Thinkorswim platform. And yeah, I was watching our man Oliver Rennick early this morning on the TD Ameritrade Network out of Chicago, and they're going back in the studio for 12 o'clock today. Uh, Tom White, Kevin Hinks, check it out, folks. Earnings uh, season bonanza, and it continues after this week. We get Fed Week next week. We get Apple earnings May 4th. Many other companies coming out with their numbers in May as well. But tech earnings, pretty decent numbers. And yeah, Amazon, they're going to be dealing with some lofty expectations, as Kevin mentioned. Number one, Microsoft's doing really well with the cloud. Well, Amazon better be doing well also. Number two, ad spending at Google and at Meta. Stronger than expected. Better be stronger than expected at Amazon too. I tell you, from the amount of ads I see when I pull up Amazon these days, it seems like they're selling a lot of ads because you gotta fight through the ads to find the top search item that is not paying to be there, right? A little bit of a different user experience and that's a different conversation as well. The price conversation that Amazon on the retail sector, it's pretty funny, right? What's not in, what's not in focus? What everybody knows Amazon for, selling retail products, every single good available online. That's their bread and butter, but AWS is where they make their money. 
advertising is a new area of growth for them, high, high margins on that number as well. Those are the areas where growth is going to be able to vary widely in terms of expectation versus what they come into. Uh, and yeah, we find out today. And as I pulled it up before, you're talking about about a 6% move for Amazon shares. And boy, Kevin talked about it, man. We get to find out, okay, where the market goes on the open. But that is a strong dollar, folks. And the market has not liked a strong dollar recently. So we just got a huge acceleration on those economic numbers that Kevin mentioned from about 103.50 to 101.68. At the same time, we saw yield spiking, okay? So we got high numbers for inflation yet again. We got a strong dollar, we got higher yields, and we got market hanging on to gains right now for some of those tech earnings. Will it be a replay of yesterday? The opening bell in three minutes. Don't go away, folks. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You're looking at an S&P up by about 24 points right now. Back to a short-term time frame. Check out the chart and where we are, man. You put this on an S&P futures contract, okay? Pretty well-defined channel line. We're bumping up against it at 4,100 right now. Things vary a little bit when you pull up the SPY, which is interesting. Now, this is the same date range, okay? This is going from the highs of 4,198. We're bumping into the higher boundary line. 
you take the SPY, it lines up a little bit different with the SPY only being open during market hours. A little bit of a different lineup, not quite back up to that point. You could make the case that a little linear regression actually brings this point down, though. You don't want to back yourself into a technical formation, but you could see how the highs that we're reaching here, even in the after hours versus when the ES contract, but nonetheless, worth noting, pretty close to the upper boundary. And yeah, we got out of this channel line, but boy, when we broke back into it, still an area of support on the downside. We'll see if it turns into an area of support on the upside. And on the NQs, you jump over to the Qs, this thing just slammed right through the top of that one, which is a little bit worrisome if you're on the short side. Because, yeah, that is quite a move. We'll see if it holds today. We had similar moves yesterday to kick things off. Let's see how Meta is starting the action off. Up $28.60. Not bad. We're about 5 bucks off the high that we got just now on the open. But nonetheless, you're up by 14% on Meta shares. We jump over to Snapchat. Up by about 3% on Meta numbers last night. Amazon up by about 3% right now. Let's see how Microsoft's doing on the second day. Digesting the gains from yesterday. Microsoft basically flat this morning. Apple, the big dog. Everything caught a bid yesterday, and check out Apple catching a bid, man. Up by one and a quarter percent for Apple shares. And this trend line here is longer term. Check it out. You're talking about a trend line from the high where this was at the beginning of 2022. And you touch that high in April, you touch that high in August, and we are at that high yet again. But Apple today catching a bit as this market holds on. Let's see how Google's trading today. Up by about two tenths percent right now. What else do we get tomorrow? We got Intel. Intel down about 25 cents right now, trading at 28.80. And let's jump over to some of those economic numbers. So GDP, 1.1% is the number. As the economy slows, that's the annual rate. Resilient consumers faced high inflation and rising interest rates, but nonetheless. Now, these are the forecasts they're looking for, okay? Yeah, basically flat, man. You're talking about barely above positive. This is the journal forecasts the next quarter. Third quarter, you're talking about negative. And then fourth quarter, you're talking about barely positive. And you add them all to up, all three of those up, and you get negative, 0.05% or something like that. So over a three-month period, you're talking about basically a stalled economy. We come in at 1.1%. Seasonally adjusted 2% growth in the fourth quarter is what we had. We're now at 1.1. Yeah, 2.6 was the number there. 3.2, the one before that, we had two quarters of negative. That's where all the quote-unquote discussion began of whether what the true definition of a recession is two consecutive quarters is what a lot of people use but then you said ah this one's a little bit different is what the contrary argument was yeah and look at look at personal spending okay Con contributions to quarterly change in gdp personal spending 2.5 percentage point growth in personal spending that's the problem, man. That's the quarter. Other was a decline of 1.5. Consumer spending, the primary driver of growth, and hiring were surprisingly strong at the start of the year. Yeah. So we'll see where we go. But that was the number. We also got PCE numbers. We'll get into those as this market holds on to the gain so far this morning. All right. What else do we got in here? Let's take a look. Yeah, let's talk about some of those inflation numbers that I had pulled up. So we talked about GDP, but what the port also showed was personal consumption expenditure. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, okay? Increased 4.2% ahead of the 3.7% estimate. High inflation and slow growth is sometimes described as stagflation. We got inflation heating up while we got growth going to negative territory. Yeah, and stocks did react little. But boy, this is quite a day if you hold on to these gains, man, because keep your eye on the dollar index. And it's remarkable that the market doesn't even care right now that the dollar just moved from 135 to 175. Usually the market cares when you get that type of a move. And maybe it will care eventually as we move through the day. We're only five minutes and 40 seconds into the trading day right now. You jump over to yields and we're pushing lows right now in terms of where we are. And you jump over. We're talking about a 10 year right now at right at 3.5 percent, right at 3.5 percent. Okay, and you look at this on a longer-term basis, folks, yeah, you're rolling over 
from an area that's been resistance, right? And what's so remarkable is you back this up. That's where we bounced around this area. You go back to June of 2022. You accelerate through that into November. And since then, we've been in a range of about 111 up to the highs of about 116.12. And we just rolled over from a price point yesterday of almost 116, 115.30. We're at 115 right now. We get the 10 year back at 3.5%. Basically, it's session highs as the market holds on to these gains, man. And if you think this is rolling over, folks, that's what the channel line looks like in larger context in terms of where this market has been. Because you really get a rollover. We're talking about 200 points to 3,900 on the S&P. But the market has been resilient, to say the least, man. We are now a solid, what, 35 points off of the lows last night. You're basically to where we were in the beginning of the day on Tuesday. But again, what I'll say is that was the beginning of the day Tuesday, folks. If I told you all the numbers we're going to get, right, because we didn't have Google, we didn't have Microsoft, we didn't have Meta earnings yet, we didn't, we had none of that. If I told you Tuesday morning, S&P's at 4,100, here's the numbers that we're gonna get, Microsoft, Google, Meta, where's the market gonna be Thursday morning at 9.35 when we open? You'd probably say above 4,100, okay? We got some economic data in the mix as well, but nonetheless, markets trade higher, and the VIX, worth mentioning, back on the decline. Lower than anything we were at yesterday, and where are we? right back to where we were at the beginning of Tuesday, right? Now, dollar index, somewhat similar, right back to where we were at the beginning of Tuesday, okay? The 10 year, yeah, you've went up and you've went pulled down, pretty comparable though, when you look at this action, but nonetheless, we've got the numbers and the S&P right at that area. What would have happened if some of these companies were missing, man? Because they got some strong numbers, right? We got some strong cloud numbers. We got some strong advertising numbers. Consumers have a lot of strength in there, but inflation still persistent. We have a Fed meeting six days from today. Be interesting to see if this market transitions to caring again about the Fed versus looking at the economic numbers, because that's a hot PCE, man. And it hasn't even mattered to the market yet, but guess what? It's mattered to rates. It's mattered to rate expectations. And that always matters to the dollar as well, as we're pushing 101.75 right now in the dollar. This market just loves it though, right? NASDAQ 100, up a solid 1.2% right now. Let's see how Meta's faring. Up 14%, Amazon up almost 3%. They're gonna have some lofty expectations for Amazon, man. Amazon from Tuesday morning is up like four or five bucks, let alone where you finish the day on Tuesday, okay? But Tuesday morning, you're up three solid dollars, 3% 3 on Amazon as they deal with higher cloud numbers and higher advertising. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by about 26 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 151. The Dow up 111 right now. The Russell up by two. Let's check in on First Republic. All right. How are they doing today? Down 1%. Uh, as my dad was saying, I was listening to his program last night. Probably going to keep getting cut in half every single day until somebody finds a bidder. What was the story out last night? That the Fed is thinking about closing the discount window on them, reclassifying the risk. That would close some of the avenues to cash that the Fed has opened up. And that seems to be the writing on the wall, man. So even at this equity, I remember talking about this Tuesday morning when it was double the price it's at right now. So this company is probably valued at $1 billion. There it is, because I knew that. Because guess what? It was valued at $2 billion 48 hours ago. I saying, what's, what's the point of valuing something at $2 billion? Um, if it's not going to cease, you know, it's going to cease to be a business. What's going on here is some of the big banks... They don't want to take on the bad parts of their book. And the only way that they can gain access to the good parts of their book without getting access to the bad parts of their book is by waiting for the Fed to take receivership, receivership of the company. <clears throat> and then they can sparse out what they'll take and the Fed gets left with the rest. And so that's what's going on here. They already put $30 billion in there, so be careful, okay? All right, we're going to jump to a little real estate. Speaking of commercial real estate, you're talking about in the den, right? Rightfully so. Um, you know, before we do, though, folks, I mean, this this s and I'm just going to go because I was going over the break. I mean, this is where, you know, you have to have an opinion to be a trader, okay? Because guess what? The market is priced for all opportunities right now, rightfully so. It's got risk to the upside, risk to the downside, right? Unless there's arbitrage opportunities, which maybe there are that high-speed computers are taking advantage of, you have to have some type of market bias or opinion. Otherwise, without any market bias or opinion, all risks are priced in appropriately in the market. With that said, I mean, I love channels, man. I love channels, I love Fibonacci, and I love volume. And with the dollar index, keep your eye on the dollar if you're in this market, okay? But my dad's been talking about it. I should pull up his Twitter account, man. What's he been tweeting? Does anybody know? We'll pull up his Twitter account uh, this morning. But the dollar's running. OK, and that's going to weigh on the market. It is, folks. So, you know, what you could do here is you get into this trade of 4,100. OK, you get a run. You could easily get a run 30 points to the price point of 4,070, the lower part of this range it's been trading in. All right. And this goes back about 10 days. We're pushing right now, even on the 30 minute. That's to the highs of last Tuesday. So you talk about seven trading days or so. But you see the types of moves this get. S&P is moving 30 points. Every other day, sometimes twice a day, in both directions, at least you have your back against the wall. You make a trading plan, okay? You push it over to the SPY, as I mentioned. And similar stuff going on with the Qs, but you can see how we broke well above that channel line there. So maybe you come back and retest it at 314 on the Qs in terms of where that channel line lines up. But that's an acceleration through it, man. On tech stocks, S&P just bumping up against it. You take a look at the SPY, we also just hit that on a tail in terms of where you put that. Now, the SPY very well could have a channel line that's a little bit higher. Maybe that's your area lining up from last Wednesday and last Thursday. The point being, 
this market, as even Kevin mentioned, hard to deny that we're getting bounces and we're getting sell-offs, right? We're at 407. Maybe you maybe you scale in with a couple contracts at this point. Maybe you scale in with one. Maybe you give yourself one more entry to a scale in when you hit that upper point in the spy. And then you got to close, though. You got to close. Maybe you, you give yourself room to 407.50 to 408, something like that in the spy because this market really gets out of hand. Then, yeah, you got to have a stop, folks, because save your capital because this market is moving in very large moves for a VIX right now that is pretty affordable at under 18. Okay, that VIX at under 18, the rule of 16 is it's pricing in a 1% move every one out of three days. So we're slightly above that level right now, right? And a 1% move would be about 41 points in the S&P. Well, I think as of Tuesday, right, there had been 22 trading days without a 1% move in the S&P. Seems like that's changing, man. We got sell-off Tuesday. We got sell-off Wednesday. We've had bounces both days. We're now 100 points off of the highs. That's 2.5% almost in the S&P. And we've had a spectacular earnings season, man. I don't think that things could have went any better. I mean, Kevin pointed out some tough numbers for Google. They're going to be dealing with that forever. They have a monopoly. Like you said, they say they don't. They have a monopoly in search. I remember, check this out. I remember sophomore year. This is even amazing now because it's 2023. Sophomore year of college, probably 2000. Graduated high school in 98. So, yeah, you're coming back for your sophomore year. No, you're coming back from your sophomore year in 99. Yeah, so 1999, sophomore year. My roommate, my best friend now, I've talked about uh, who lives in Switzerland, very bright kid in guy now uh, in technology, and he told me right away, don't use anything else besides Google. That's it. It's the new deal. You want to search the internet, forget about whatever it was. Was it Netscape? I forget what even, that's just a browser, right? What was, what was, what did you search before Google? What did you search before Google? Isn't that funny? Uh, nonetheless, back to 1999, they're going to be dealing with some woes in terms of losing that monopoly. Web crawler? Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, nonetheless, 4,100 in the S&P. I just like the fact that it's right at that price point, folks, all right? There's a couple areas in this chart that's worked out. When you've got back into that zone, where did you accelerate to the bottom line to? You did get below it last night on the close. Maybe that's a little bit exacerbated. You know, channel lines can be fluid, okay? You break above it, it's an area that's been testing. And boy, if this channel holds, man, you're going to talk about lower prices because you see that we just went down 100 points in about five to seven trading days within that channel line. It's a steep one. Okay, let's talk a little real estate because that ties into everything. Profit margins are sliding for Americans who sell their homes. Talk about an obvious statement, right? But check it out. Lost profits from the recent market slowdown affecting homeowners. Your profit margin peaked at 56% back in June of last year. It's down to 44% in terms of the numbers and your profit margin for what you're selling. And yeah, it's going to matter, folks. And this is going to matter for some time. Now, it's a weird environment when you think about home builders are probably going to have it made, man, because there's going to be very little reason to sell your home if you own it. Folks, I would encourage you to do everything you can to keep that mortgage that's at three to 4%, okay? Rent out your home. You're not gonna get the ability to take on debt at that price level in a home that's backed by it. And in most markets, rent may be weakening a bit, but because of people not selling their houses, okay? And there's, in, in a lot of areas, it's gonna get even more difficult when there's no land to build on for home builders, right? That's where things get difficult. Because out here in Lakeland, they have developments like I've talked about with 1,400 houses coming online. And I tell you, man, as somebody in the business talking to my dad about it, saying, man, it's got to be incredible to be trying to sell these 1,400 houses right now when rates just went up to 6.5 to 7%. I take Tommy through there. We go for bike rides. We go for walks. And they are just selling them like hotcakes. There's new families moving in every single time we're over there, it feels like. Uh, and they're just still building them out as they go. But Why? because who else is selling their house right now? You're gonna be taking a hit and that's gonna persist for some time because don't give up that mortgage, man. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go out and get another mortgage instantly? We'll talk a little bit more about these numbers in real estate. We'll be right back, stay tuned.
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN and dot com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Market's pushing higher. Looks like the spy's on its way to 408, man. 407.62 right now. You jump over to the S&P futures. You're trading right now at 4106, just climbing a little bit above that channel line. You really break away from it, uh, saying maybe if you were going short, maybe 408, 408.10. This is an area you get above there. You're probably breaking above that channel line. But we'll see. As the market's showing no weakness whatsoever right now, you jump over to MetaShares. Up by 14.7%. Amazon's got a lot to report for today. They're at $108 right now. Up three bucks, up 2.86% for them. Microsoft catching a bid back above 300. Check it out, right? Apple shares up 1.1%. And that is all in the face of a dollar index that's still sitting at 101.70. And you have higher yields as we're now sitting at a price of 114.31. The 10 year back above 3.5% but the market persists. Let's see how Snapchat's trading ahead of their numbers. Well, they give back some of it. Snapchat's its own deal sometimes, man, as well, in terms of if you're advertising everywhere, you're advertising on Facebook, you're advertising on YouTube, you probably don't have to cover the board with Snapchat if you don't want to. You can probably reach who you want to reach outside of that. Maybe there's a select niche in there, and that's the perception from somebody approaching their mid-40s, 
but Snapchat only up 1.2% on some pretty strong numbers for Facebook. So the market's saying the same thing. Yeah, we like it, but let's see Snapchat put up. Intel's been tough recently, man. Yeah, trading down right now on positive everything else. Intel down about six tenths percent right now. AMD off 1.4% right now. Taiwan Semi is up about half a percent right now. All right, let's see how gold's trading as we finish up. Yeah, we got a strong dollar. We got gold trading back with weakness below 2000. You're at 1989. Gold down about seven bucks. And how about Bitcoin, man? You talk about volatility. Bitcoin, you talk about volume too. You see the volume spike on Bitcoin when it traded lower last night? Down to 27.5. Just like that, we're back at 29,000 in Bitcoin. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman with the Tiger Technicians Hour coming up next. And don't forget, folks, Basil's got a webinar coming up next week right on the front page of TFNN. Check it out. Stay tuned for Basil. He's up next. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks. Have a great one.